Welcome to AOVO Movie Recaps channel. We hope you thoroughly enjoy our videos. Before diving in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's hard to imagine a chimpanzee making this gesture. How did this become globally recognized? It all started that night, when the chimpanzee inhaled a mysterious gas. Overnight, it grew to 8 meters tall and became extremely aggressive. It even managed to kill a large black bear effortlessly. The sturdy cage was smashed down in just a few blows, Everybody back! causing the crowd to scream and scatter. George the chimpanzee broke out of the cage and ignored his owner Davis's calls, smashing through windows and escaping. He then leaped from the rooftop, causing the surrounding crowd to scream in terror. Without looking back, George ran off, flattening a car on the road before Davis caught up with him. No, you're scared. I'm gonna help you. At that moment, police cars arrived, and several officers emerged with guns. Davis rushed forward, urging them not to shoot and attempting to calm George. Suddenly, an airplane appeared, and without hesitation, someone on board shot George. Enraged by the gunshot wound, George ran towards the plane, but quickly collapsed due to exhaustion. By the way, if you enjoy our movie recaps, we're currently hosting a giveaway for our audience. We're excited to announce that a brand new scooter awaits one lucky subscriber. Don't miss out. Subscribe and follow us to stay tuned for more updates. The next target of the helicopter was a giant wolf, which had also been exposed to the gas. Combat personnel searched for the target in the jungle and quickly found the giant wolf. The leader, a bearded man, confidently aimed his gun at the running wolf and fired. With a gunshot, the wolf fell. The helicopter landed in the forest, and they found the wolf's footprints, realizing the immense size of the creature, making everyone nervous. They raised their guns, vigilant of their surroundings. Suddenly, several deer dashed past them, followed by a dark figure that swiftly took away a teammate. The same giant wolf from earlier. Frantically, they shot at the wolf, but it evaded their bullets and turned to slaughter them. Captain saw the wreckage all around him, realizing his opponent was formidable. He urgently called for air support as the giant wolf chased after him. He could only run for his life. The helicopter in the air also spotted the wolf and fired at it to rescue the man. The wolf, however, charged back at the helicopter, reaching the edge of a cliff. With a powerful leap, it soared into the air. The helicopter couldn't evade in time. The wolf effortlessly landed on it causing the helicopter to lose control instantly. The wolf's massive weight shattered even the rotor blades. The helicopter crashed into the mountainside and exploded, sending debris flying. The captain, staring at the distant wreckage with dread, was unaware that the giant wolf had silently approached him. In one swift bite, the captain was taken down. This gas originated from the violent experiments of the Ann Corporation. Using various animal genes, they synthesized a new gene in space. However, upon returning to Earth, the spaceship malfunctioned, and the gene samples were inadvertently inhaled by animals, causing genetic mutations that made them continuously grow. As the situation worsened, the government dispatched Negan to handle it. But fearing exposure of their illegal experiments, the corporation erected signal towers to attract these rampaging behemoths. Wireless signals were quickly transmitted, and the giant wolf sensed it. By now, it had grown even larger and ran towards the direction of the signal transmission. On the other side, a sea monster also sensed the signal and swam towards its source. George, on the plane, received the call and slowly regained consciousness. With a slight effort, he broke the cage. His movements grew increasingly violent, causing the aircraft to shake violently. The pilot struggled to control it as George broke free from the cage and entered a state of frenzy. Grabbing whatever was nearby, he smashed it forward. Negan had no choice but to shoot at the raging chimpanzee. However, George ignored the bullets and charged into the crowd. By now, he had grown even larger, easily knocking down those who fired at him. Negan grabbed a submachine gun and opened fire on the rampaging George. Davis picked up a tranquilizer gun from the ground, only to realize that he and George were the only ones left in the cockpit. 
Negan found himself pinned under George's foot, perhaps because George recognized his former owner, hesitating to attack Davis immediately. As Davis prepared to approach and calm George, a soldier behind him fired at the gorillas. George grabbed Negan and threw him out, then swiftly caught the soldier who had fired at him. A stray bullet hit a box of explosives, causing a powerful explosion. The aircraft suffered a large hole and quickly lost control beginning to plummet. As Davis watched the plane about to crash into pieces, he exerted all his strength to rescue his female companion. Meanwhile, George remained trapped inside the aircraft, unable to move. The speed of the descent increased rapidly. Davis strapped on his parachute, glancing at the struggling George. At that moment, George miraculously broke free from the weight pinning him down, roaring as it threatened to engulf him. Davis hurried to save Negan, who was still gasping for air. Just as George lunged at him, Davis, with Negan in tow, leaped out of the plane. Negan finally woke up at this critical moment. Holy shit! You're welcome! Davis deployed his parachute, and the plane crashed to the ground, erupting into flames. Sorry, George. When they returned to the crash site, George's body was nowhere to be found. It was evident he hadn't died in the crash. Negan informed the military that the rampaging beasts were headed to Chicago. However, the black military officer seemed more confident than Negan, dismissing their warnings. Davis planned to steal a helicopter to reach Chicago, but was intercepted by the handsome Negan. Grateful for Davis's act of saving his life, Negan handed him the keys to the helicopter. Together, they flew towards the destination of the rampaging beasts. Meanwhile, the military pinpointed the location of the beasts and launched a missile at them, but to no avail. They then dispatched a team to search for them. The beasts quickly joined forces, eliminating the target. Negan discreetly informed Davis of the situation. Davis witnessed smoke rising from the city, realizing he was too late. Military tanks had already rolled onto the streets. As Davis searched for the targets, an armored vehicle flew past him, crashing into a nearby building. He also saw the two rampaging beasts, now even larger in size, making cars look like toys as they wreaked havoc on the city streets, leaving destruction in their wake. A golden retriever barked at the giant wolf, which looked back at its relative with a smile. Startled, the golden retriever tucked its tail and vanished. An armed helicopter continuously attacked the wolf, but suddenly, spikes emerged on its back and tail. With a powerful swing of its tail, the wolf startled Davis with this new ability. It leaped onto a bridgehead and howled. A fighter jet also arrived and dove towards the two beasts, unleashing its firepower, but to no avail. Just then, there was a disturbance in the water, indicating the presence of a colossal creature swimming slowly towards them. It easily overturned a pleasure boat, causing its passengers to fall into the water. Drenched, the creature crawled onto the shore, revealing itself as a massive crocodile. Like the two beasts on land, it seemed to have absorbed the super gene, but its size was even more enormous. Well, that sucks. Direct all forces at that thing now! All firepower was directed at the massive crocodile. However, the ordinary attacks felt like raindrops on its body. With a terrifyingly large mouth, the crocodile stomped on several soldiers, showcasing its destructive power. When a fighter jet approached, flying too low, the crocodile simply snapped it with its jaws, effortlessly crushing it. A slight shake of its head sent the aircraft crashing into a nearby building. Seeing no other solution, Davis decided to search for an antidote. Meanwhile, the military continued their futile attacks on the three behemoths to facilitate the evacuation of civilians. Once the nearby neighborhoods were cleared, the military decided to deploy a super bomb. A B-2 bomber carrying the super bomb headed toward Chicago. Davis arrived at the M Corporation building and, with the help of the female scientist, quickly located the antidote. However, they were intercepted by the company's CEO and forced to hand over the antidote. As they left, the female CEO injured Davis and took the female scientist with her. The electromagnetic waves emitted from the rooftop signal tower attracted all three beasts, including the largest crocodile. George the chimpanzee stood out. 
He was the first to reach the rooftop, frightening away the male CEO with a roar. George grabbed the helicopter pilot and tossed him out. Seeing the female scientist about to be crushed by the helicopter, Davis arrived just in time to rescue her. George shook the signal tower vigorously, prompting Davis to decide to use the only antidote hidden by the female scientist to save George. While George continued to smash the signal tower with his fists, Davis decided to take action. The female CEO aimed her gun at Davis, demanding safe passage. Davis pretended to agree, and just as George appeared, the female scientist slipped the antidote into the female CEO's bag. A monster to the gorilla. George grabbed the female CEO, opened his mouth wide, and with a gulp, swallowed her whole. Enraged, he pounded the ground with his fists. Meanwhile, the giant crocodile continued climbing, eventually penetrating the skyscraper, emerging from the other side. The giant wolf also reached the rooftop. Davis and the female scientist boarded the helicopter just as the building collapsed under the assault of the beasts. The beasts tumbled down with the collapsing building. Davis struggled to control the tailless helicopter amidst the powerful air currents. As the building collapsed, it stirred up clouds of dust, shrouding the entire city in a hazy gray. Finally, Davis and the female scientist crawled out of the helicopter. A chimpanzee emerged from the debris, regaining consciousness and recognizing his owner standing before him. He casually flipped off Davis before departing. Good to have you back, buddy. As Davis and the chimpanzee George were happily chatting, the other two beasts emerged from the rubble. Davis decided to take George and stop them. George chose the most challenging opponent, the giant crocodile, as his target. He grabbed a nearby object and hurled it at the crocodile, sending it rolling on the ground. Just as George dropped the iron bar he was holding, the giant wolf pounced on him. The two beasts immediately engaged in a fierce battle. George swung the wolf around and aimed it at a nearby building, hurling it towards it. Astonishingly, the wolf sprouted a pair of wings mid-flight and began to fly. Of course the wolf flies. George charged at the wolf as it landed, but the wolf managed to shake him off, biting him fiercely. Seeing George in trouble, Davis fired a shot at the wolf, hitting it squarely. The crocodile, not hesitating to seize the opportunity, clamped its jaws tightly around the wolf's head. Despite the wolf's struggles, it couldn't escape the crocodile's grip and met its demise. Now, only the giant crocodile remained. Davis fired at it, but his bullets ran out. With no other choice, he turned and fled. Just as the giant crocodile opened its mouth to devour him, George descended from above, wielding a car and smashing it against the crocodile's head. Despite George's full effort, the immense size difference meant he couldn't inflict fatal damage on the crocodile, and he was quickly thrown aside. The crocodile calmly approached George, who, after a brief struggle, could only turn and flee. However, he was caught by the crocodile once again. Seeing George about to be swallowed by the crocodile's jaws, Davis accurately threw a grenade. At this point, George was already exhausted from the struggle, but just as he seemed doomed, a loud explosion knocked the crocodile down. Davis thought the battle was over, but to his surprise, the crocodile opened its eyes again. The crocodile raised its tail and fiercely lashed out at Davis. George, in a timely manner, used his body to block the lethal blow, but the force of the crocodile's tail sent him flying. Unfortunately, he was impaled by a steel rod and incapacitated. With only two minutes until the bomber arrived, time was running out for Davis. Watching George struggling as the crocodile approached, intending to deliver the final blow, George endured the pain and pulled out the steel rod lodged in his chest, dragging his heavily injured body upward. However, he was once again bitten by the crocodile, which slammed him hard onto the ground. Davis ran toward an armed helicopter, activating the weapon switch. Bullets were fired at the crocodile, successfully diverting its attention. The crocodile turned and headed straight for Davis, but the bullets didn't halt its advance. Davis released several rockets, which exploded accurately on the crocodile's body. However, when the smoke cleared, the crocodile emerged unscathed, leaving Davis with no choice but to continue fleeing. As Davis faced imminent danger of being bitten by the crocodile, George, with both hands holding a steel rod, leaped high and fiercely stabbed into the crocodile's eye. 
George held onto the steel rod tightly as the crocodile let out a piercing scream and finally collapsed. The military witnessed this scene and immediately cancelled the bombing plan. George had exhausted all his strength and could no longer hold on. He sat down, gasping for air, extending his massive fist to touch Davis's, then slowly closed his eyes. Just as Davis was immersed in grief, George's eyelids twitched. Did I just see you close your eye? From then on, the two of them, along with a joyful gorilla, lived together peacefully.